Hello everyone and welcome in the React Native Show podcast. I'm Wukash, your host, and in this episode, we will focus on how to profile apps in React and Native. Uh, I want to talk about performance optimization because, like you know, in January we released the ultimate guide to React Native optimization. Profiling is one of the topics that we covered in the ebook, and who is better to talk about profiling than the author of the iOS profiling chapter, Edu? and performance optimization expert from Callstack, J uh, Jakub Binda, JB. Uh, hi guys, how are you? Hey. Uh, so Edu, I'll maybe uh, you want to go first and int introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, I'm Edu. I've been in this uh, IT world around 12 years doing games and mobile. Uh, been touching a little bit of Android, iOS, Flutter, React Native, a little bit of everything. Um, well, and I'm working here at Costac and excited to be here with you. And we're great to have you, uh, grateful to have you here on podcast and in Costac as well. Uh, JB, can you go next and introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, of course. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is uh, Jakub Binda, aka JB. So, Mm, I'm here uh, since a uh, couple of years already, and uh, yeah, uh, I mainly focus on improvement, uh, the performance, and working on that uh, in my daily work. So yeah, I'm very excited that you invite me here. So thanks. Awesome and great to have you, uh, guys. Today in this episode, I want to cover three uh, different aspects. So profiling in React Native, in iOS, in Android. I want to also talk about what metrics do we want to profile and the workflow that we follow when profiling the app. What is, how is it useful? How is it most useful? What you have to do in order to squeeze the most out of the profiling. So I guess let's start from the beginning. And if anyone can tell me what the profiling actually is, what does it mean to profile your app? Yeah, so uh, actually profiling is uh, grabbing an information from the app while interacting interacting with it. So uh, profiler app means that you need to use a specific tools to do so. Uh, those tools are called uh, profiler. And based on the result of using those tools, uh, you receive a set of data. Those data uh, are called metrics. And actually, um, if you compare the profiling, you can think about this about uh, like uh, debugging when you are looking for an uh, issue inside your app. But with the profiling, you get this data that you can spot the performance issue during analyzing uh, those data. Okay. And uh, what are the use cases uh, for profiling? You said debugging. So debugging is when you want to find the uh, uh, bug in your code when you want to know more about it. What is the use case to profile your app? Yeah, so the use case is uh, you need to profile your app to get the data uh, according to what I, what I just said. And based on this data, the shape of this data, you are able to spot a performance issue in your app or do this profiling in a regular basis to actually check the health, uh, the healthy state of your app. Uh, or boost your performance uh, even or, uh, even more. And from the business perspective, uh, it's also necessary to profile your app because then uh, you are able to make a good decision and um, unlock some resources or decide if you need to put more effort to optimize your app and work pretty extensively in uh, upcoming uh, product increment to actually focus on the performance in your app. Those are the, the basics one. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Edu, do you want to chime in and uh, tell us some more about your uh, take on why you should profile your app? Yeah, sure. Uh, like Shabby said, you use it for sport performance issues. And there are a couple of different of them that you I can name off, like uh, 
you can identify uh, bottlenecks. Like if you start using your app and you navigate to one screen, and uh, that that screen start consuming a lot of memory or resources or something, uh, the 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 device will start asking for more resources to try to handle uh, your feature or your or the behavior you are trying to achieve. Uh, so in that moment, you are start like requesting more stuff and try to handle all the actions, and then you have uh, that bottleneck that we can uh, identify when we start profiling. Uh, and also because of this, like I said, all the start requesting more memory. Probably there is something that we try to load an image, or we try to do some. Uh, I don't know, uh, some logic. And that logic, because we need to store store some variables or we need to store something into memory, start growing up. And we have something that is called garbage collector and try to keep the memory, the memory clean. But if that doesn't happen, the memory start growing and growing and we can profiling, we can find this uh, like we call memory leaks because the garbage collector never clean it and the memory keeps growing. And all these issues can impact on the, for example, on the battery. It start uh, When we start asking for more memory, the CPU start doing uh, more works, uh, start working more, start using more uh, cores, and all of that will start draining the battery because it's basically needs more energy to keep all the the app working as the user expect, right? Um, yeah, something that probably uh, that we should probably take care of. Uh, yeah, I. I I noticed that you started talking about metrics, which is my actual other question. <laughs> the next question that I wanted to ask you is like, what are the specific metrics that we see in the profiling tools? So you already said memory, you already said battery life, you already said CPU, but let's start from the beginning and maybe uh, talk some more uh, around those. What do we see in profiling? and what actually does it mean and how we can see the bigger picture, how we can connect the, uh, the measurement of memory, the measurement of CPU consumption, how we can see what's behind those metrics. Yes, uh, those metrics, as you, well, we start and you start saying uh, time, basically, uh, that is like the one of the most out of there, we are always in rush and every user is in hurry. So time is something that we want to keep track on. And a couple of them are like uh, first time interaction with the, with your app the, or your screen. And also when uh, you need to do any updates on your screen or any feature is the render time when you start showing components to your user. Uh, and depending on where you are, like on React Native, React Web, or Native, will that will mean different stuff. Like in React Native could be uh, when a component updates because a prop change, or if you start changing and moving your buttons uh, from different places will be like a layout, uh, change or in web could be like the DOM. So uh, those are like uh, metrics that you need to be aware of. And um, well, we said we talk about memory that uh, you need to uh, the uh, to keep the memory at certain level, right? Uh, if not, there are like Android start doing some process that start killing uh, different apps that are in background to give you more memory. Uh, and that means that the next time the user wants to navigate to the app, if 
the OS kill it will take more time for the other apps. So we probably need to think of that and don't consume too much memory. And uh, sorry, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. For the first metric that you said, time, like broadly time, but uh, in specifics, maybe uh, render time of some components in React or React Native, or maybe frames per second can be like translated to time as well, because something has to happen in a, in a time that allows us for 60 frames per second. That is, uh, I would say, harder to spot and harder to actually see and measure those time differences. And memory consumption, it's really easy to visualize because you have a graph that's probably growing or staying the same. And if it grows constantly, you have a problem there, my friend, right? Like if it's not releasing, if it's not releasing the memory that it takes, there is a memory leak. With time, it's quite different. Mm. Yes, sometimes. Let me, if you are using like an animation and you are doing like a really heavy work updating the components, the animation, let's say that we have a ball that is bouncing, we start seeing like at the top and start dropping frame, as you said, and we see we lose the, the moment that he goes, the balls goes down and up and we keep seeing like up. They start moving and translating, let's say on the X or in the Y uh, axis, but never going down. So we miss the bouncing. Uh, so that also is a way like we can start like spotting that we are dropping frames, something is, uh, we are doing something heavy and probably uh, is we have to track the time. Uh, as, as you said, the dropping frame. Sometimes it's like a symptom dropping frame because mm -hmm. of timing or because of all the updating on all the layout changes that we are doing. So if you if your device uh, are capable to render in 60 FPS, it means it renders 60 frames per second, which is 1000 milliseconds. So uh, technically each frame are, uh, or should be rendered in 16 milliseconds. So uh, you need to keep that in mind to actually uh, have uh, your application efficient enough to handle not only on the more, more powerful device to render your content in that time, but also you, you should actually aim and consider weaker device uh, to fit uh, all of the logic in, in that time because your users are smart. And there are also some tools on a user device that allow users to check uh, and uh, do some um, maintenance mode. And if your app becomes uh, too memory uh, and consume too, too much memory and drain battery, uh, user will definitely uninstall your app. And also uh, the same case is connected with the longer render time because if the user notice that your app loads slowly, uh, there are um, measurements and a benchmark that 70% of users are capable to drop your app if it loads too uh, slow for them. So mm -hmm. it's also important to uh, get those metrics, understand them, and use them to forge it to your success and uh, to encourage your user and give the, the best user experience that you get. Yeah, I can imagine that that statistics that you just mentioned can be extrapolated to other metrics that like app size, uh, app size is not something that we profile, but maybe memory usage is also something that uh, might encourage your users to drop your app because it takes too much memory and it doesn't perform well because it takes too much memory. Okay, we talked about time, we talked about memory. What are other metrics that we uh, want to profile, to measure, or we can profile and measure? Uh, yeah, we have CPU network, and I like to add user engagement. I don't know if... <laughs> for uh, for the user engagement, uh, I feel like this is this doesn't belong in the profiling because you cannot actually profile how users are using your app, but I think this will be relevant in the workflow user engagement can can give us some insights about our application 
and can be really useful in uh, profiling workflow. So let's let's uh, circle back to that when we are in the workflow section. Yeah, of course. I have a couple of examples about it, I think. OK, uh, awesome. But yeah, uh, I can talk a little bit uh, about CPU. Uh, it's, uh, we on we have a couple of uh, tools to do you see it, but CPU the idea is uh, how how much work the the CPU and the cores are using are yep are, are doing. So if we start doing some heavy computation, uh, the the device will try to uh, give the that work to to the cores and start trying to resolve all the problems that you are trying to achieve. And if we start giving a lot of work to that, that could make like your uh, you are your UI freeze or stop being responsive because uh, the cores are like working too much in solving all your computations and all the work that you are planning. So it's not only about the number itself, but also uh, the correlation with other things that happened in the same time. So it's totally natural that CPU usage will increase while operating and interacting uh, with the app. The question is how to conclude that this CPU is too, too high uh, and, for, for example, investigate that this uh, amount of CPU usage at that time is actually something that we do to work on. Yeah, I can imagine in your profiling tools, which we will talk about the tools <laughs> soon, but I can imagine in your profiling tool, tools, if your graph is on 95% of CPU usage at all times, it doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong. You might want your app to be on 95% CPU usage at all time. You might, I don't know, mine Bitcoin or do some heavy GPU calculations or something like that. And it's, it's logical that it's going to stay there. But if you don't expect your app to, uh, to eat resources and it does, something is wrong. So like, like JB said, you have to like correlate it with actual user actions. You click something, you don't expect it to be heavy but it is something is wrong and you have to like uh, look into it yeah exactly and you need to be aware that uh, high cpu usage also will impact a uh, higher battery drain which probably is not also something that you would expect uh, on your app when shipping it to your final user yeah definitely okay i think we touched several metrics and i guess metrics will also come in uh, as a side note in the uh, later part of this podcast. So let's move on. And right now I want to move on to what kind of tools we are using to profile apps in React Native first and then in native Android and iOS. So let's start with tools to, to profile your app in React Native. Okay, we, we can start with the simplest one because uh, you can technically put a timestamp in, in your code in, in React Native and then comparing the result, you can actually grab some measurement connected with uh, how much time does it take to on your component to, to render itself. Uh, so this is the, I would say, basic one. But uh, on the top of that, there are a, a tools built that allows you to do the same. And affecting the code, you are able to measure the same thing, for example, with the uh, React profiler using the profiler component. And also, for example, there is a library called white render, uh, which allows you to grab another aspect, uh, not only, or maybe uh, not the render time of the component, but how many time and why your component gets rendered. And this aims to the particular uh, case related to too many renders, which also can uh, impact your CPU and memory usage on, on your device. Uh, next, more complicated one, and I would say this is a real profiler. Uh, it's a profiler comes from the React Native uh, DevTools, 
Uh, it can be used separately. It can be used also as a plugin for the flipper, and it allows you to actually press the record button. And while connect, connect while being connected uh, with your app, you can uh, proceed interact with your app. And then after you stop the profiling, you will get uh, results. And in case of the profiler, the results uh, are the uh, charts. And those charts are called the flame charts. On and on these flame charts, you are able to notice um, how your structure of the component looks like, and also each uh, block is represented with some specific numbers. Uh, so you can see how much time does it take for your component to render itself, and also how much time it took to render itself and all of its children. So. Uh, it might be quite overwhelming at the beginning, but when you get used to it and learn how to read this flame chart, uh, it's an extreme, uh, power, very powerful uh, charts. Uh, so I encourage you to learn how to read them. And those charts are available not, also, not only in the React DevTools, but we can see this chart also in native, uh, on the native side when profiling the, the native app. And also, it is available for the web environment. So they are, they are, I would say, pretty common when it comes to comparing and reading the uh, structure on what's happening under the hood of your app. Yeah, so, and I think the this is the go-to tool for React and React Native developers, the, like the profiler from React Tools, from React Dev Tools, and um, the things that you mentioned previously. I think profiling, Profiler somehow builds on top of them to allow you to see your whole application in working and not only specific components uh, uh, render time. But like you said, render time for, for me and for my children. So I can easily spot the bottlenecks, which components are too heavy or which should be memoized and stuff like that. And also another point that I want to raise is that the prof the profiler for Re from React DevTools are actually a common language for React and React Native developers. And if you know the tool, you can get a screenshot and you, you can actually help someone debug their app, profile their app, just by looking at their profiler output. You don't have to have access to their application. You can help them just with this, which the tools that JB mentioned previously that don't really give you, I would say. And some other tools that we may talk about from native side might be too difficult for someone from like a junior developer to gather. So, yeah, I think the the React Native profile, uh, sorry, the profiler from from DevTools is real a uh, sweet spot for profiling. You you should start definitely there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would say that it is the that, that's why I call it a, a real profiler because this is the the first uh, tool that actually might be called profiler on 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 that list. And definitely, you don't necessarily need to do a screenshot. You can actually export your data and share the data, so you can yeah. upload data to your dev tools and actually have this nice interaction that is implemented in in that um, Flipper plugin. Uh, or dev tools if you are using the the dev tools so you can track it one by one a click uh, here and there and actually yeah spot spot the bottlenecks okay uh what is next on your list to mention in react native tools after the uh, profiler from dev tools the tool that is also by default included in the flipper is uh, hermes profiler uh, it has uh, quite similar look uh, related to the React DevTools. Uh, I'm, I'm saying just about the profiler part. And you are able to grab the measurements in the same way, like for uh, from the React DevTools profiler. But it allows you to uh, show um, some more data related to the uh, JS bytecode. So for example, you can uh, get the name of the function or part of the logic that are actually causing the issue. So it, 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 I would say it's much more detailed uh, and mm -hmm. it is a second class citizen, I would say, after the, the, the profiler. 
when operating and, and profiling your, your app. Uh, it works also nice when you come from the native world and you already did some profiling in your native world, but you would like to check because you already conclude that uh, the issue that you spot from native part uh, is on the JS side. So that's why uh, you would like to use the Hermes profiler to actually spot in which place exactly in JS part uh, the performance issue is located. But we will probably go to that native section later as well. Yeah, uh, just to mention, uh, JB, we are talking about some list <laughs> of tools. So I would like uh, to ask our producers, Basia, to please include that list in our show notes. Uh, so everyone can listen to this and like really go through the list and uh, look at the tools and look how can you use them because uh, it's it sounds scary when JB is talking about this, and it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not that easy, but it's also not that hard. You should. You should get familiar with with those tools, definitely. Yeah, also, definitely. And sorry, I want to say that this Hermes profile I cover a little bit on the iOS profiling in the performance guide, and I will. Sh I show you there everything that Shabi is telling you that you can spot like the the name of the function that is causing issues and everything so i want to mention that oh yeah awesome like definitely download the guide and read the guide first <laughs> obviously yeah uh, yeah so so we actually touched the, the the flipper and the extension of react dev tools and uh, hermes profiler but uh, the Flipper has a strong community, so this is not the only profiler that you can get to have Flipper. So uh, the next one is a React Native Performance Monitor. It's from uh, BAM. So it's a company that is also very focused on uh, work related to app performance, and they delivered outstanding tools out there. So this profiling allows you to mm, record an action in the same way like you will be recording action for the uh, profiler mentioned uh, previously. But in this time, uh, you will have a nice interactive uh, chart of how your uh, FPS on JS and UI site uh, behaves during the action that you actually profile. And in the end, you will have a final score um, with the average of FPS uh, during that action that you uh, recorded. And it's something similar to the Lighthouse uh, available for the web environment. So they actually took that idea and uh, transferred it to the React Native world. Uh, and recently they released also a flashlight. So it's very similar about the name. So it allows you to also record and profile uh, the same metrics that I mentioned, but on the production application. So you can grab those measurements and then compare the results to see uh, or compare the result of your app over the time. So yeah. from the, directly from the release uh, builds, not only by, while being connected in development mode. So I want to summarize this section about tooling in React Native. So you can go low level and use like timestamps, you can use React Profiler uh, or Why Did You Render? That are the like low level tools. Then you can use some tools like Profiler from React Dev Tools or uh, Hermes Profiler, Flipper. Uh, in Flipper, you have a few different plugins that, that can do the job for you. And then Flashlight from BAM. Um, what about Reassure from Callstack? What about our performance regression uh, library? Can you call it a profiler and how does it fit into our uh, profiling world? Yeah, Reassure is definitely a tool worth to mention, but as you uh, call it, it's a, it's a tool that prevents from performance regression to occur. So it is capable uh, to do some measurements about the render time and the number of renders of your component. However, uh, the use case of Reassure is to actually uh, set up in, in your workflow in the pipeline to monitor a crucial components inside your app 
and uh, then after each change uh, is pushed to, to your main branch, you can uh, actually um, run it on the CI. And then if you spot some regression, you might decide to, for example, uh, not do a, a release uh, and fix the performance issue first. Do not bring any regression uh, to your uh, final users. Yeah, actually uh, reassure under the hood uses the React profiler, right? The component, it wraps the components yeah. into profiler and that's how it knows uh, what changed over time. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, exactly. I think we covered the um, React native side of things. So let's go to the native side and let's talk about what do we measure in native and how do we measure in native? So, uh, sorry, how? Uh, we already answered the metrics question. So how do we measure? What are the tools in, let's say, Android? So uh, in Android, we have an Android Studio. And inside Android Studio, we have a tab called uh, Profiler. So accessing this tab uh, allows us to uh, press the record button in the same way like we had in, uh, in the React Native side, and then also uh, proceed with some actions on our device and grab the measurements. Uh, however, those profiler tab are focused in mainly uh, CPU, uh, memory consumption. We have a clear information about what's going on on different threads in our app. So uh, there, is, there is much more detailed tab and a lot of things going on there. So after these uh, measurements, uh, yeah, it might be overwhelmed uh, at the beginning as well, but we can clearly get information uh, where uh, our issue uh, are. And actually, Android records a system trace, so we can export the file, we can share this file, we can load it and analyze when we receive uh, this file from uh, our colleagues. And yeah, this is a very active way of profiling your app. Of course, you, you also can enable some console logs and uh, check what's going on in your log cut to, for example, get information from a choreographer and also from the OpenGL renderer, uh, which gives some information about skipped frames or, or uh, for example, the information about some render times uh, on your native uh, views from, from Android. Uh, but yeah, um, Profiler tool is, is the main tool uh, very powerful that uh, you would use very extensively while, while profiling your native Android app. Uh, and what's more, you can actually use a library um, called uh, Macrobench and uh, Microbench, which allows you to write a test case scenario inside uh, your application and then uh, receive some results uh, and compare them uh, during the uh, development cycle of, of your app. So, so in, it's in native world, uh, it's the, in React Native, you cannot get the CPU and memory numbers. Though for those, you go into the native world. So in Android, you use the profiler tab. Uh, and uh, other things as well. I'm not negating that. I'm just saying uh, CPU and memory are the easiest to visualize and easiest to understand metrics that you have to go to native to get them from. Yeah, uh, and in the metrics in the flipper that we mentioned actually has a connection to the native side. So you, you need to pull those information from the native side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about iOS? W what do we do there to, to get those numbers? Yeah, uh, what I do first is open Xcode. Um, when you run your app, it, it shows you like a summary of how is the memory, CPU, network, everything going. Uh, that will help you to have an overview of your app and how it's behaving. But if you want to go like deeper or really specific on each point, uh, you can open instrument that is a tool of box, has uh, many, many uh, items 
uh, to use and to start tracking a specific. Uh, you have activity monitor that help you to uh, actually monitor your CPU, memory, disk, network. And as soon as you play, you have to you uh, select the the platform you want to uh, to start monitoring your app, and you just play it, and will start and will start throwing a lot of data. Uh, it also has the CPU profiler if you want just to focus on that, the time profiler, and a bunch more. Like if you are just, if you have native code, because you can, you are doing like using the bridge and you want to squeeze the performance and you have actually code in, in native, you can get a uh, a lot of information through those tools um, that will help you to to keep your app uh, in a good shape. Yeah, okay. And um, what do you guys think <laughs> in, in terms of native tools? Which one is better? Which one do you like more to use? Is it iOS one or Android one? That's yes. hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, personally, I, I prefer to work with Android One. I feel like it has much more um, functionality uh, and flexibility. Uh, may maybe because that Android, from my experience, uh, usually had more serious issue with the performance and iOS was uh, most of the time more stable comparing to Android and uh, yeah. But I also see that uh, in numbers of instruments in Xcode are, yeah, in Android, Android and Android Studio, we have only one profiler tab, uh, which is still very powerful. But yeah, the number of tools that you can use on the Xcode site is uh, much more extended, I would say. Yeah, I think for a uh, user, a uh, developer that just start, uh, Going into instrument could be overwhelming, overwhelming because you start seeing like around ten tools as soon as you open instrument, and you don't know what to touch. You see uh, activity monitor, CPU, CPU counters, and um, probably it's too much, and you don't know. I just want to see some graph and telling me that where the app is. I don't know performing bad. Uh, Android is like going straight to that point and you can like uh, see a nice summary of the of each of the metrics and you, if you start like uh, clicking it will expand it and you will start seeing uh, more data you can pause it and just grab one frame and start looking what is going on there so uh, I think it's a little, I like a little bit more um, on that uh, on that sense if you want to just start getting into this of the old profiling. That is a new skill that you need to learn. Yeah, yes, like clicking around the system in, React, uh, in Android Studio or in Xcode is a skill on its own. Honestly, like for React Native developers, it might be overwhelming, like you said, like even wrapping your head around different options and or, or finding the lock cut. Like it takes I, I, like three clicks to get to lock cut in, in Android, honestly, uh, and probably even more in, in Xcode. Uh, yeah, I, I digress. Uh, let's move on. I want comparing to talk those comparing those differences, uh, there are also uh, similarities because in the end, the CPU, memory, memory, and, and so on are actually the, the same. So, if you get uh, how to use and how to understand the CPU usage and the memory, it will be the same no matter which uh, tools you, you are using. So, if you grab the differences between those two platforms, then uh, you are fine to go because the conclusion and the way of thinking will be. Um, mostly the same for both of them. Well, and you have to use both of them if you have app 
on both platforms, right? So yeah, like, it's not like we can choose which one to use. It's just that Android is better and we all agree that it is. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to workflow. So um, after we discussed metrics and we discussed tools, I want to understand what is the workflow, how you actually go about uh, spotting the issues, measuring them, choosing the right tools to measure them, and then uh, I guess at the end, improving your app. Um, yeah, I, I can jump in a little bit. The most basic one, I will say, is like reading in your Play Store or App Store, your <laughs> app is a slow. <laughs> yeah, the, the it's, user it's reviews. Late. Yeah, it's too late, I know, but at least you you have a something. Someone is telling you that somewhere in your in your app is like performing bad. Okay, because sometimes you developers we are testing and we just test one feature and we yes it's working and we don't uh, you see it as. Uh, with the user's eyes. So that would be the first one. Um, well, uh, l let me stop you here. I would hope we have QAs who well. <laughs> can spot the issues before our users can. But what I would agree with is that the users are uh, the ones with most devices, most categories of devices, most time spent in our app. So that is definitely the right source to get your information from. But I would hope we have some QAs <laughs> in the system before users that can tell us that our app is eating memory or that it is slow on some screens or something like that. I think that's why you need to collect the performance related data from the production because then uh, your users become your own testers that will share the data uh, with you. And based on that data, you can actually uh, also make some conclusion and and uh, put more effort to, to fix this or check the performance issue. And this is the place why the profiler comes in and uh, why we had been talking about those tools. Yeah. So what are the other... Uh, okay. One start of the workflow is you get a bad review or you get... A, essentially like performance back from your QAs. What might be the other places that you get the starting point from that you need to profile something? Yeah, in my case, I also sometimes use like, uh, well, I use Firebase to start like uh, tracking all the uh, user flows through the screens. And um, Firebase lets you create like funnels, like the user will navigate from a screen B to C and C to D and so on and so on. And sometimes you can see that users are dropping on, let's say, screen B and you can start thinking, okay, could be like, I don't know, UX or could be like an actual performance issue that uh, happens to me a couple of times that you have like a really big form with pickers, models, showing some photos, images. And those could be like, uh, like a, a, a something that you can get tracking, uh, the tracking, uh, before reaching uh, to the, those bad reviews. Yeah, 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 definitely. Something that you can plug in and actually record, like JB said, like actual production data, actual production user data uh, is really important. And yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the same thing that you uh, were saying in the beginning that one of the metrics is user engagement. Like if you yeah. lose users on some screen, something is definitely wrong there, either with UX or with performance, and we have to like check it out. Yeah, um, because so the bad reviews are those users that, I don't know, 
are really angry with Europe and want to say something about it. But <laughs> probably you have tons of the other users yeah. that it, they are seeing is a slow and just uninstall it. And yeah, you don't they just don't why. care. <laughs> yeah, they just, okay, it's a slow and install it. But someone, okay, I stop using it and install it and you can't know about it. Actually, so so the, the workflow is a very important thing connected with the profiling because the profiling the app is also a, a part of the whole workflow. So if you have your app in the production and you don't collect uh, any performance related data, I think you should implement that one to start collecting them from the production. Uh, another aspect that you can use is actually um, do something called performance audit. And during this performance audit, it's not only about reading and reviewing the code base, it also about uh, do some profiling in the crucial user paths, as uh, Edu uh, mentioned. And based on that profiling, uh, you can get some information about potential performance issue. And uh, in Colstack, we always try to implement Mm, not only a single action performance boost, but we think about the performance at, as, a, as a whole part, combining and including all of these parts. So uh, if you have the app, you might already know the problem. So we can do some extended audit, fix all of those issues, and then uh, prevent from um, introducing new issue by, for example, uh, implementing Reassure or micro macro bench uh, library for Android that I mentioned previously. And uh, sometimes when you put a lot of effort to, to the performance and fix some specific path, it's quite easy to lose it over the time. So it's extremely important after you invest and put a lot of effort to get to some point and bring your performance to another level is to sustain that level. That's, it, it's also a crucial. And actually we come here to another Mm, part of the workflow, which is not only an initial investigation, applying a fixes and boost the performance, but also uh, try to do is it as often, I mean profiling your app as often as possible to control and monitor the progress to sustain that effect, because it's easy to do some mm, sanity checks in very uh, often way, then uh, get into the troubles that Edu mentioned about uh, your user complaining about the app working slow and so on. Uh, so yeah, those would be, I would say, also important part of, of the workflow, which in the end leads to profiling your app, utilizing the tools that we already mentioned. And if you want to know more how to tackle the performance from the business perspective, for example, uh, there was an awesome talk from Mike Hujak in this year, uh, on last year React Native EU conference. So uh, please refer to, to his talk because he presents one of the potential approach, uh, how to deal with the performance, not only from developer, developer perspective, but also from the uh, business aspect related to, to your whole product. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great talk. Uh, we will uh, again link this in the in the show notes. Um, thinking about the workflow and profiling, is there a proper way of me doing this? Should I start by using native tools and go up to React Native tools, or maybe it's the other way around, and I should start from uh, React Profiler and go down to native uh, only when when needed. What do you think? I think there is no gold solution to that and it depends on your use case. Personally, I like to operate with Flipper and the DevTools, so uh, I try also to train myself and uh, randomly run the Flipper Profiler to check what's going on. Uh, but having this uh, React Native profiler included in, in Flipper, when you do some profiling and you've noticed that there is a um, higher CPU usage, you might want to actually jump to the native part of, and profile your app with the native tools because it might be some, some sometimes uh, 
much easier to spot uh, the issue on uh, with, with the native uh, profiler. I think w- w- one thing that I uh, got from you here is that you said I like uh, you, you say Flipper, right? And, and I yeah. use it. So like, that's the great answer, actually, that you should do what you like, just just do it, just use some tool to profile. And like doing the things that you know how to do and uh, are able to do, you can actually spot the, 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 the issues, you don't have to use something that that is out of your realm, for example. If you have a tool that you know how to use and you are very proficient in it, you should use it. Yeah, and uh, I think what to keep in mind here is to actually uh, use and profile your app as often as possible in the uh, release mode, uh, because uh, in development you might get a different result each time you, you do the profiling. So there are proper settings to, to do before you start your measurements. And also the flashlight tool allows you to actually install your app on your phone and then interacting with your app while grabbing the measurements. Uh, so yeah, it's the recommended way to actually grab the result to, to have as much trust to the uh, outcome from these metrics as possible. Okay. Uh, Edu, do you want to add something? Yeah, I start uh, not from Flipper, but probably I start using or Android Studio or Xcode, just to see in the overall, and then like going, I don't know, up or deeper. So I start looking like how is behaving uh, the app on each of the metrics. And if I start seeing like, probably uh, if I don't know, if I see some, I have, uh, some suspicion or something is wrong, I start digging into, or if I, someone tell me, okay, in this screen, there is something wrong, I start using and seeing how, I don't know, the memory, the network or anything is behaving until I see something. Because sometimes uh, happens to me, like you start seeing this uh, slowdown when you are, writing something while it's uploading the image and you try then to create a new item. So there are a, a bunch of situations that must be to happen at certain moment to that uh, performance issues happen. So I, I sometimes I like to start using it while I see the overall when I kind of spot it and then go and start chasing that path. Yeah, that that is also a great answer. What I got from your answer is look anywhere. And then if you have a suspicion, if you have something to investigate, you have to jump to other tools and like you have to follow the trail, uh, so to say, but like you can start anywhere, but then you you, you will find it somewhere else. Uh, I I love that. (laughs) That's a great answer as well. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it exactly fits to the workflow that we mentioned to do some yeah. sanity checks and actually see what's going on. And I- if there is something suspicious, jump into details and yeah, try, try to spot and solve the, the issue. Yeah, awesome. Uh, listen, guys, we are wrapping up the episode. So maybe there is like uh, something that I have not asked you about yet, but you are eager to talk about it. So now you have... Uh, some time to like add something to this conversation about profiling in React Native, in Android, in iOS, in Native, maybe in React itself. Uh, is there anything like that? Yeah, I think if you don't know how to profile your app, I would rec- I would recommend you to to do so. So please learn how to do this. Uh, there is a lot of materials out there, uh, so we encourage you to 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 check out. And uh, from my experience, achieving some performance improvement might be very motivating for your team and allow other members of your team to actually be more focused on the performance. So uh, yeah, I I really encourage you to do so. So happy profiling. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If you are the first person in your team 
to look into profiling tools, you should really download the ultimate guide to React Native optimization that we just released, and you can find some information there. And I bet if you are the first person in your team to do this, you will uh, get praises from your boss. If you fix something in your, in your production application and it's easier to use for your users, uh, you, you, will be, uh, you will be praised by your, yeah, by your teammates. Yeah, great, great suggestion, also, JB. It might be also a double-edged sword because uh, if you do a lot of related to performance improvements, so if you don't protect yourself uh, from having a regression, then you might suffer because you need to do the same thing over and over again. So that's why uh, it's so important to have uh, some tools that prevent you from uh, regression on performance. Yeah, yeah. Reassure, yeah. for example. <laughs> example, yeah. Uh, I want to add that also don't get crazy trying to uh, start probably you read the guide, listen to this, and oh, I want to perform, uh, start profiling the app. And you probably start seeing a bunch of numbers and you don't know if it is okay or not. So you probably should start waiting for those symptoms that JB started mentioning before and use them as a ceiling and try to improve it and get uh, when you actually could get better numbers, use it as a base and then try to move between those. And you have to think like almost every line of code that you write will impact the performance. So don't get too crazy if you start seeing like it's growing because you start just with a chat, just writing text, and then you end up sending images, videos, and you the performance will be higher from than from the beginning. So just you have to uh, put it in the right moment as like JB said, I think at the beginning of the, the, the episode, think uh, for your use cases. Edu, I hear what you're saying, but I have to disagree <laughs> with you. I have to say, be crazy about performance. <laughs> and I'd love to see some crazy freaks, performance freaks out there who can take their code base and like really, uh, make it perform, perform the best it can, even by spending weeks and weeks on this. <laughs> so we are on two sides here, but I, I, I can hear what you're saying and I agree with some of it, but with some of this, I don't agree with. Well, at least for the beginning, don't. <laughs> when yeah. you get uh, into the loop, yes, go crazy, get nuts and start like uh, <laughs> making your app really fast. Yeah, probably okay. before tapping a button already displaying the screen. You can yes, <laughs> yeah. And there are there are methods to do that actually, right? Like uh, there are some some techniques that we can uh, use to actually do some of this. Okay, uh, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much, JB. Thank you so my uh, so much, Edu, for joining me on this React Native uh, show podcast about profiling in React Native and Native. Uh, for those who want to learn how to be freaks about performance and about profiling, uh, our ultimate guide to React Native performance is still available to download. And actually, it gets updated every so often. So if you downloaded it two months ago, you might consider downloading it again. Uh, JB. Uh, Edu, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope we will see you in the next episode of the React Native Show podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you to invite me. Bye.